Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranakhat, West Bengal, India. This is a case of phacolytic glaucoma. The patient presented to me with intraocular pressure of 60 mm of mercury. With intravenous mannitol and other anti-glaucoma medications, the intraocular pressure has come down to 36 mm of mercury and I have taken up this case for surgery. This is the main incision with a 2.8 mm steel keratome at the mid limbus at 135 degree. And now this is a sideboard about 3 clock hours away from the main incision on the right side and this is another sideboard on the left side about same distance away three clock hours. An air bubble is injected underneath this air bubble type 2 0 0.06 percent dye is applied over the anterior capsule. Now we can see that the pupil has not dilated well. Size of the pupil is about 3.5 to 4 millimeter. So my plan is to use adrenaline after washing the dye. So I inject air bubble again and then inject preservative free adrenaline for intracameral use. This is epitrate from Sunways. And now the antechamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Now capsulorexis. As soon as the anterior capsule is incised, milky fluid comes out. This indicates it is a hypermature Morgagnon cataract. Rexis is being attempted with a uterator forceps, go anticlockwise. When I come to about 3 o'clock, the milky fluid is so much that I can't see well. So I have to aspirate some milky fluid inject visco and then proceed again. Through the side port at 8 o'clock I am aspirating the milky fluid because if I, in, if I aspirate through the main incision the capsular tag will come out throughout the main incision and the rexis will extend to periphery. Now after aspirating some milky fluid visco is again injected. Now we can see well Though the pupillary size is about 4 mm, we can make an adequate size to rexis going beyond the pupillary margin in some places. Here I am trying to go just beyond the pupillary margin and yes, this makes the rexis size adequate. And now the tip of the FECO handpiece is introduced. Now I'm thinking how to divide the nucleus. Should I go bevel up? But we cannot engage the nucleus with bevel up. So this is a beautiful technique. Make the bevel down and the teeth gets occluded immediately and make a tunnel and then come out because with bevel down dividing the nucleus into two is a bit difficult so make the bevel up again and now go through the tunnel as soon as I go through the tunnel the tip is engaged go through the substance of the nucleus for a distance and divide the nucleus. This is a free floating nucleus. There is no epinuclear cushion around. Yes. So the chance of catching the posterior capsule is much more in such cases than in immature cataracts where there is an epinuclear cushion protecting the posterior capsule. 
At this moment, the size of the pupil has become very small, about 2.5 millimeter, and I thought of using a pupil expansion device. And this is the pupil expansion device at my hand. This is BHEX, invented by Dr. Subhan Bhattacharji of Kolkata. The antechamber has been filled up with visco. Now the BHEX goes in and at on go the leading flange is tucked and the flange at on o'clock is then tucked. Now I go through the left side port. This is BHEX forceps and the flange at 10 o'clock is tucked. This is real time and it takes this much time to apply the BHEX pupil expander because no injected system is required to apply this device. And now the size of the pupil is about 5.25 millimeter and it will be very easy to manage the case now. The fragment at the center is being emulsified the machine being used is Oatly Cater X3 and ultrasonic power is 60%, flow rate is 40 and vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury. And this is the big chunk. Making the bevel sideways, engage this and divided the nucleus into two parts. Now this fragment is being emulsified. In this case, since there is no lens matter to protect the posterior capsule, I'm going to use IOL as a scaffold. So I come out at this time, fill up the bag as well as anterior chamber with visco. The fragment is pushed downward towards 6 o'clock and the lens is implanted in the capsular bag. This is a hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens. Yes, the lens goes in the capsular bag and now the nuclear piece is going to be emulsified over the eye well which will protect the posterior capsule. So whenever we have this kind of cases like hypermature Morgagnian cataract where there is no epinuclear cushion protecting the posterior capsule, we can leave the last fragment, emulsify it over the intraocular lens scaffold. At this time care should be taken not to apply ultrasonic energy on the eye well surface. There should be a micro gap between the titanium tip and the intraocular lens. And similar gap should be between cornea and the phaco tip. And now this is how we remove the VHEX after injecting visco, untuck all the flanges and just pull it out. So this VHEX is a very beautiful device. It is, in my opinion, it is much more easier than any other device to apply and to remove. Removal is much easier. And now the visco that is there in the capsular bag as well as in the entry chamber, in the entry chamber angle, uh, all the visco is removed by Simco as well as by manual irrigation aspiration. And now some moxifloxacin is used. This is intracameral moxifloxacin. And then the side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma. This is the side ports. 
at 8 o'clock and 2 o'clock yes and now this is a final lavage of the entry chamber this patient did very well in the post-operative period the intraocular pressure was controlled without any medication and I was quiet there was no flare or cells this is formation of anterior chamber and then the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills